What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Front Yard Fantasy Week 7 Waiver Wire Ads video. I am Simon here with my buddy Jay, and we're going to be going through six players today that we think you should be adding off of the waiver wire this week. Jay, we're going to start with you first. Give us your first name. Yeah, so I'm going to go with uh, Old Man AJ Green. Yeah, he hasn't been uh, you know, too exciting, but he is second on the team in targets with 32. He's had exactly six targets in five of six games, so... Say what you want, but he's at least been consistent. Uh, Double-digit points in four of six games and 44% rostered. So give me the second option in this high-flying offense, and especially with all the injuries that we're dealing with uh, coming up on bye weeks. I think he's somebody that not necessarily – he's more of a floor play than he is a ceiling play, but coming into bye weeks, that's what you need. You need guys who you're going to be able to rely on and give you those double-digit points uh, to get you set up to be able to win. I think that's a great ad, Jay. And just to add to what you said about bye weeks, this is bye Mageddon for fantasy wide receivers. Specifically, Ooh. this week is really bad for wide receivers. We've got the Bills, the Cowboys, the Jaguars, the Chargers, the Vikings, and the Steelers. Just think about the names that we're knocking out. Stephon Diggs, Amari Cooper, C.D. Lamb, um, Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, Chase Claypool, Deontay Johnson. It is, it is insane the amount of top-tier wide receivers that you're not going to be able to start this week. And A.J. Green's getting the targets. You can plug him in. He's got a pretty safe floor in my mind. I, I really like that ad, Jay. The next player I want to talk about, I want to stay on the wide receiver position for a minute. Um, and this is another old guy that I think you should be adding. He just came back from injury. T.Y. Hilton from the Indianapolis Colts. Now, don't hear what I'm not saying. I'm not saying expect T.Y. Hilton to return to form of years past that we've seen, but this was a favorite target of Carson Wentz prior to the Hilton injury. We're hearing out of uh, camp reports that they loved each other, had a great connection, and then his very first week back in this offense, four targets, four receptions, it was enough for me to be interested to add him onto my fantasy teams. Uh, so I'm putting in low fab bids for T.Y. Hilton this week. He's 39% rostered in Yahoo League, so he's probably sitting there on your waiver wire. And you can probably grab him for a couple bucks, two, three dollars fab, and you'll probably end up with him on your team. And it's one of those things where I just want to wait and see. Is this preseason connection between Wentz and Hilton for real? Is he going to come in and get a solid workload? Uh, there's the outcome where he doesn't, but I, I want him on my bench in case he does. Yeah, and they announced today, too, that Paris Campbell is going to miss an extended period of time, the poor guy. He's got all the talent in the world, but uh, he just can't stay healthy. So, you know, there's somebody else where targets were going that are available now. So, you know, I'm not necessar necessarily one that believes in the old vacated targets argument, but that is one less mouth to feed. Um, if that connection is there, like you said, T.Y. Hilton could be a pretty solid pickup. I hope all those targets go as rush attempts to Jonathan Taylor is what that I hope. Nice. That would be nice. That would be nice. He, he had two carries in the first half last week, and then he on. went off in the second half, but you got to feed the guy. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Jay, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next guy. Who is your next waiver wire target for week seven? Well, I'm going to go stick with wide receiver and talk about somebody who just came off the IR with Rashad Bateman. Uh, like you said, it was another guy who had a lot of preseason hype. Uh, he was looking great in camp. Uh, he had a connection with Lamar Jackson in his first week back. He had a 22% target share, which was tied with Mark Andrews for the most on the team. Um, he played 65% of snaps, and he's only rostered in 27% of leagues. He is free. He, I mean, you can throw him at the end of your bench. This team has been much more pass-oriented than they have been in the past. Um, you know, if he is somebody that is that becomes that wide receiver one that Lamar Jackson has never had, watch out. This is definitely a ceiling play. Um, I think he is going to be a chip into the production a little bit of Marquise Brown. I think Hollywood's going to be fine. He's the big play guy. Uh, Mark Andrews, is, I honestly, of anybody, I probably worry a little more about Mark Andrews. I think, you know, because he's always been the go-to guy for Lamar. And if Bateman becomes that guy, you know, like, as you like to say, don't hear what I'm not saying. Mark Andrews will be just fine. But, you know, some of those targets that have been going to him could go Bateman's way. Yeah, uh, I, I disagree with you a little bit, but then you jumped in and said something that made me think we're on the same page, just maybe taking slightly different directions of the conclusion. I do think, I, I'm not worried about how this affects Hollywood. I think Hollywood has a pretty clear role in that offense. I think if it affects anyone, it is Mark Andrews. But uh, Mark Andrews is still a high-end tight end. I, I love adding Bateman onto the end of your bench because I expect this Ravens offense to continue to be more pass-heavy than we've seen in years past. Just look at their running backs. Devonta Freeman's their best option. Um, they're going to have Lamar throw the ball a little bit more than they have in years past. I, I love that pickup, Jay. Absolutely. So who's your next guy? 
My next guy, we are moving away from the wide receivers, for me at least, into some running back pickups. And the first one I want to talk about, we're going to stay on the Colts for a second for the time being, and that is Marlon Mack. Uh, he is rostered in 29% of leagues, and the entire purpose, I'm saying, to pick up Marlon Mack is the swirl of trade rumors surrounding him. There are running back needy teams, the Browns, the Seahawks, just to name a few, that could really benefit from a skilled veteran back like Marlon Mack. I, I expect him to end up on one of these teams in the next couple weeks. And at that point, his value immediately skyrockets. Uh, he, he's worth nothing on the on the Colts right now, but he will have extreme value on one of these teams as either the second guy or the first guy because of injuries. So Marlon Mack's a guy that I'm trying to add to the ends of my benches now uh, before the trade news hits. Worst case scenario, yep. you can drop him in two weeks. I, I absolutely love that move. That's And that's the, the key that for me is before the news hits because a lot of people yep. are reactive instead of, you know, looking ahead. And I compare it to, you know, it's not necessarily going to be this uh, this type of situation, but Last season, I said that you needed to add Antonio Brown a few uh, a few weeks before he was eligible to come back, and people are laughing. You don't need, you know, he's not coming back. Blah blah blah. Don't add him. Well, anybody who added him uh, is looking pretty good right now. So I think, like I said, I don't. I'm not saying it's going to be that good of a situation, but making those moves weeks in advance is the play. I think it's a great move. Yep, go get him before the price is too high. Uh, it may never get there, but you'll be really happy if you go and grab him, and then he ends up on the Seahawks with a with a solid workload over there. Jay, who is your next guy? I'm going to go to the tight end position. It's somebody who I was um, propping Whoa. up last week, and I think that as long as Logan Thomas is out, Ricky Seals-Jones is somebody who you can start and feel pretty confident. Um, he's averaging over six targets a game, and – to be clear, this is with Logan Thomas out. Once Logan Thomas comes back, you might as well, you know, throw Ricky Seals Jones back on the waiver wire. But with him out, he's averaging six targets a game, nine point six points per game. Uh, he is at sixteen point eight target share, which is second on the team, and he's available. Excuse me, he's only rostered in twenty nine percent of leagues. Um, this is another move, kind of like we were just talking about, where you know some people. Or like, well, you know what? If he's only going to be on my team for a few weeks, why do I even want to bother? Well, you know what? People were saying that about Chuba Hubbard a few weeks ago. Oh, well, Christian McCaffrey's only going to miss a few weeks. I'm not going to spend any uh, spend any fab on him. Well, people that did are looking pretty happy right now because now he's going to miss at least another three weeks. Um, so two sides of the story. One, we don't know. You can assume what the story is going to be. We don't know how long Logan Thomas is going to be out. They could say a few weeks. And then, you know, it could turn into an extended period of time. Two, take the production while it's there. You know, even if he does only help you win one game, that one game could be the difference you make in the playoffs. So don't be afraid to pick up these guys. Yeah, they're only going to help you for a few weeks, you think. Even if that's the case, if they help you win one game, it's worth it. Especially if you're 1-5, and 2-4, and 0-6, oh right now now this is the week where you have to start buying wins it doesn't matter what yep. they cost you go and buy them you trade away studs for players that are going to start this week you go and spend up in fab for these guys that can help you win this week next week doesn't matter because if you don't win this week you may get knocked out of the playoffs yeah um so absolutely you, if you've got a bad record this is the time to go week by week look at every week as an independent contest and ricky seals jones is the kind of guy i completely agree with dj he can help you win this week for sure yep absolutely so, Simon, who do you have for your last guy? My last guy, we are staying on the same team, Jay, as Ricky Seals-Jones, but we are going over to the running back position. J.D. McKissick is a must-add for me right now. Yeah. And honestly, that was even before Antonio Gibson was out with an injury. J.D. McKissick is involved in this game as a pass-catching back. Uh, so in PPR formats, he has standalone value, even whenever Gibson is in the game. He may be a bit game script dependent, but the Washington football team – will find themselves in negative game scripts where they need to be throwing to the running back. Now, on top of that, Antonio Gibson is out injured. He got an MRI. We are waiting on the news from that, but it could be an extended amount of time. If he is out, J.D. McKissick's value skyrockets because he should keep that receiving role as well as gain some more of the rushing work. Now, he will not be a full workhorse back. They've got Jarrett Patterson on the team, who I imagine will get more involved with Gibson out. But an increased workload at all for J.D. McKissick makes him startable across all formats for me. Yeah, I love that pickup, and I think you said it perfectly. You know, too many times people see, oh, whoever the direct backup is, they're just going to slide into that role. Like you said, that's not going to happen. But any sort of extra production that he's going to get definitely shoots his value up. He was already a flex play. And if Antonio Gibson is out an extended period of time, I think he's honestly 
uh, locked in as pretty much a back end RB two. Yeah, um, he had eight carries and. 10 targets in this last game, and that was with Gibson only missing the fourth quarter. His usage in the fourth quarter with Gibson down was up incredibly. I, I have uh, I have a lot of excitement for J.D. McKissick, whether or not Gibson is out, but if Gibson is out, he's an absolute must-add at that position. Absolutely. That is it for our Week 7 Waiver Wire Ads video. For more fantasy content and advice, make sure you are subscribed to the Front Yard Fantasy channel, and we will be back with more waiver wire ads for week eight next week. So make sure you tune in then. Until then, everybody, thank you for watching and we will see you later.